Hi, my name is Michael Shields. I am the new brand ambassador for Christie's Direct 2020. Now we're going to do a little bit of a Q&A questions and answers. Well, for me, it would be Hypercrens Pro. It's bubblegum, it smells fantastic, and it's safe to use on every surface. We just put it on a spray bottle as well for doing the tops of your tables and between dogs, spraying all your harnesses, leads, whatever it is, and it will disinfect your salon and it will kill all 99.9% .9 of all bacteria. Another thing that I, would, that I would like to talk about again would be the Lucillin. Just to give that wee bit of added extra protection, but for yourselves going through this coronavirus, God knows how long ago, how long this is going to go on for. They say 18 to 24 months. Well, that is maybe yes, 100%. And for 18 to 24 months, you know, that's a long, long time. And for you to protect your customers and your dogs coming in and out of your salon, plus yourselves, this stuff kills bacteria. It doesn't say on the tin, oh, it'll kill coronavirus. Coronavirus is a bacteria. It's the same as a flu symptoms or whatever it is that, that, that they say it is this stuff here will protect your dogs between grooming and also will protect you as a groomer so for me i would spray this on and sell it to your your, your customers upsell it in your salon christie's to do a package on them you can upsell them from christie's and for me to be honest with you guys spray it on the dogs before they leave you can use it as instead of using cologne use this I'm telling you, it's fantastic and it goes a long way and it will protect between hatting over the dogs and receiving the dogs into the salon or whatever way you're going to do it or whatever ways you have things in place. And for this, the smell of this, you can put a crate at the front of your door or whatever, how you're going to do it. My setup's a wee bit different. Then um, for me, I use that just on a spray bottle, any old spray bottle that you've just run out of and just spray it all around the crate, spray it around the door handle, spray it around the reception area, whatever it is, and that will kill all 99.9% .9 of any germs and bacteria that's in there. And for in between dogs going in and out of the salon, this is a no brainer. I love it. Well, for me as a dog groomer, I think detangle sprays are amazing. This, amazing tricks. And I always say that whenever I'm doing my webinars and seminars or whatever it is I'm doing, or if I'm having workshops or whatever in the salon, this stuff here is, it does what it says on the tricks. It's amazing. It will, de de your, all your detangling sprays are out there. There's some other ones as well that are fantastic. But for me, this is my favorite. And the smell that comes off this lingers on the dog for days. Some customers say, God, that smell was on the dog. What was it? It will last for a week. And I'm like going, all right, that is fantastic. Now you get a lot of colognes and things. Yes, they'll last for a couple of hours, last for a couple of days, whatever, because it can't be chemically, because you can destroy the dog's coat. But this stuff is natural. It is fantastic. And it's going to, not going to destroy the dog's coat. There's another one I really like as well. It's the Grim Professional Wonder Coat for everyday use in your salon. It's a lot cheaper than the, the Amazing Tricks, but it does exactly the same thing. And there's a lot of groomers out there come back to me after getting it and saying to me, oh my God, this stuff's fantastic. When they get this stuff, they go, oh my God, this stuff's even better. But for I me, mean, for the two of them, you know, it's much of a muchness. For me, detangling sprays are very, very important to have. And even if you're, you're, you're a pet owner uh, sitting at home and you've got a dog with a thick coat or whatever, and you want to brush that coat, brush and dry coats can damage the coat and break the coat for, if you just spray that over as just like a like a like if you would do with your child's hair a, a, a conditioning spray use it as a conditioning spray it'll help you glide that comb and that brush through the coat without damaging the coat and it is fantastic the best shampoo for me um would be obviously bright white shampoo to give it that crisp clean shampoo and also there's another one that i do recommend for Bichon Frises for people that are dog groomers out there in the salon. I wouldn't recommend it for home grooming because it does leave the coat really, really, really thick. For, your, for um, pet owners out there, I would go for the Bright White Shampoo or the Aloe. The Bright White will brighten up that coat and leave it nice and white and beautiful looking and clean. 
This will also brighten up that coat. This aloe, we, cut, we use this in the salon and we also use it, sell it to our customers for home grooming. Bichons is what you know yourself are very sensitive skin at times and they, 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 they do get a lot of flaky skin and whatever else and discolouring and all. The bright white is fantastic for that. The aloe is fantastic for anything with like flaky dry skin. That's what I would use these two products on. But for groomers out there, you can't beat the big and beautiful for giving that lift to that coat for you to be able to scissor or, or um, clip it or whatever it is you want to do. But to get that volume into the coat Big and beautiful for me is fantastic and if any of you are out there watching my webinars or seminars or whatever it is, that's what I use and if you see me in my salon, that's what I use on all my wool coated dogs, poodles, especially Bichons. Bichons fantastic and it will brighten up that coat for you as well. Why do you like it? It's me. By the way, I used to do barbering years and years and years ago, but I didn't work in a barber's, right? So I know how to work a pair of clippers for humans and dogs, and that's what dog grooming came out of and all that. So for me, I groom my own hair in lockdown, and I've been doing it now. This is my third cut, and I'm getting better at it every time I do it. Um, I use the Arco Clip Trimmer. Making it lovely, don't you think? Blends well, doesn't it? Looks great. The Arco, fantastic. Not only does it work on dogs, it could work in a barber salon as well. They're brilliant and they're color coded just like the, the other snap-on combs that I would recommend all the time, the wild snap-on combs. The, the, the color code is just like that so you know the lengths and the sizes to use. I love them. What I would do is get the dogs straight on the bath. All dogs go straight on the bath to be honest with you. And we do our bathing in there and how we find that they have them. If either the customers come and tell you that, oh look, you know he's got a few fleas, um, would you be able to get rid of them? Yes, we will be able to get rid of them. I just go for a flea shampoo. Um, I use the Bye Bye Buzz everyday use. I use this, but my favorite is this Tropic Clean. It is unbelievable. It will, there will not be a flea living in that boy's body after you wash on it. Now I would wash it two to three times in this, this stuff. It, this, dilutes 5 to 1. I know it's a, it's a short dilution but it's a fantastic cleaner and it will it will deflee that dog. You will have nothing living on that dog. Ticks and things I would use um, then leave it till I've dried because ticks stay on the dog. You can't blow the dog the ticks out of the dog when you're drying them um, and then just use the wee tick remover and tick it off but nine times out of ten this will kill them and it, it is fantastic. I love it. Well, for one of the if the dogs are at home and they're out the backyard and you have to go out or you have to leave leave somewhere where there's shade, should it be a garden bench, a table, something that they can go on under and get a shade away from the sun, that will keep them cool. Dogs do a lot of panting and that's how they cool themselves down and in the warm weather people's phoning me going oh my god my dog needs shaved, oh my god he's panting away, he's really warm, he's overheating, he doesn't need shaved. The dog doesn't need shaved. Just have a nice cool area for them to go and lie down and, and plenty of water. No, I don't. Dogs need hair to protect them in the summer and in the winter. A dog's coat, if it's maintained, this is why I would not recommend shaving your dogs down. The reason that dog groomers have to do that is because the dogs aren't being brushed between grooming or you're not just brushing it right. And if you're not looking after the dog's coat, and with this lockdown that we've had for the last, me, I was closed for eight weeks. I'm seeing a lot of dogs coming back now that are having to be shaved. And yes, I would recommend shaving them to an extent, but I would recommend whenever I send them home with the customers that they keep them in, inside and keep them cool and keep plenty of water. Don't let them out to the sun to get sunburned. And if you can, if you, can stop that, then you, 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 you just keep them inside or give them somewhere with a shelter. As dog groomers, we wouldn't shave your dog down to the skin unless we really, really had to. And that's just down to pure felted, matted dogs. For me, customers coming along and saying, oh, my dog's overheated and oh God, you need to shave him. You need to take him on as tight as you can. No, we don't. And we don't do it. We actually don't do it. I just say, no, sorry, that dog's hair there will protect that dog from sunburn. It will also, it'll give a flow of 
cool air going through the dog's coat. If that dog has no hair, then that, that hair cannot trap that coolness of air or breeze or whatever it is with an underneath that coat, so then that dog will, will overheat. The dog, the sun hitting the dog's skin directly will cause overheating. If that coat has a, bit of, a nice wee padding on it, then that will stop that from happening. Now, as dog groomers, as they say, when we clip them dogs down, we have no choice. We have to do that because your dogs has been mad at And, you know, at this time, we're going to see a lot of bald dogs. There's nothing we can do about it. But for me, I would say, but keep your dogs inside. And if they're really bad, hot, if you can't touch the ground with your hand for any more than a couple of seconds, then that dog's feet will burn on that ground. That's too warm for a dog to be outside. The dog should be inside, it should be sheltered, it should be looked after. And if a dog groomer, any dog groomer out there that has any knowledge to this when it comes to the skin and the coat types and everything else, which they all should have, for you to ex shave a dog down and not explain to the customer why you've had to do it or what is the what what is the consequences of shaving that dog's dog coat down to the skin, then you would need to tell them they need to keep it inside, protect the dog away from the sun in the really hot times of the day, walk the dogs early morning and walk the dogs late at night when it's cooled down. If you can't put your hand on the tarmac like that without hurting your hand after a few seconds or if it's really really warm if it's really warm for you it's bubbling hot for them so they overheat a lot quicker than us so if you can just remember that make sure if you shave that dog down you tell them why and what they need to do to protect that dog and do not let that dog be out in the sun in the really hot sun because it, it, it can damage the dog really really bad and then it can get skin and uh, sunburn and it's very difficult to clear that up and they can break down so just be careful whenever you're shaving your dogs down as groomers and for homeowners, for pet owners, just be careful when you tell the groomer to shave the dog to the skin. That's not the way to go. They need hair to protect them in the winter and in the summer. Well, the more you wash your dog, yes, it can end up getting really smelly. Yes, I do recommend washing your dog every couple of weeks or whatever in between grooming or every three weeks or whatever, but if you can avoid washing them all the time, then that's whenever you're going to break down all those natural oils and the dog will smell all the time. If you overheat it, then you will get a smell. You'll get a, like, a, like a pungent smell. It will, like a doggy smell that people keep going on about and like pet owners and all say to me, oh my God, my dog stinks of a dog whenever it gets wet or it stinks of a dog whenever it's overheated or whatever else and things like that, yes. Lucillin spray can help protect that. And if that's not something that you would want to use all the time, um, then you can just buy wee colognes and things and just protect it. But overwashing your dog can make a dog smell. So I would recommend every two to three weeks before, I wouldn't over overwash my dogs, no. Just protect that. For me, um, if you're buying a puppy from a breeder, Breeders will, ex ex will, will actually tell you exactly how to maintain your wee dog's coat and whatever else. If you're just getting a wee puppy, you know, from somebody that's never bred before and whatever else, and they're just a normal person that just decided to have pups, buy a brush, buy a comb, and buy a wee detangling spray if they have long coats, or if they're going to be like a Shih Tzu, Lazav, so Bichon, Frise, Poodle, whatever it is, buy it and use it in between. Use it before they come to the sand, get them used to brushing them, play with them, put a hair dryer on, blow it at them, things like that it will help them before whenever their first initial visit to the, the dog groomers. Another thing as well, dog groomers use a lot of clippers. Clippers are vibration, vibration makes noise. Get an old toothbrush, an old electric toothbrush, turn it on, rub it over the dog, get them that sensation going, oh, this is nice, my mama can do this, then the dog groomer can do this. If you don't visit the dog grooming salon and people out there give a lot of wrong advice, you don't need to take your dogs to the dog grooming salon until they're a year. You don't need to take your dogs to the dog grooming salon until they're eight months. No, wrong, completely wrong. After their first fax, their, their second vaccination, sorry, when all their vaccinations is over, it's recommended to take them to the dog grooming salon for a wee bath and a wee blow dry. That gets that dog used to that environment. If you're not, if a dog comes in for the first time, after a year, this is where the problems start. Your dog's petrified. It's never heard a hairdryer. Might hear the hoover and it's afraid of the hoover. Yes, because hoovers have that 
pungent and that noise, that but a hair dryer is a wee bit different. And when we're using hair dryers, we're not using normal hair dryers as dog groomers, we're using blasters that would blast your hair dry within 10 seconds, like blast the dog within 20 seconds, or 20 minutes or whatever, or 10 minutes, depending on the dog's coat. For a wee pup, you could have it done in no time. Get the dog in as early as you can. After its second vaccinations and it's out learning how to walk in the lead and it's playing in the garden and things like that, get them used to coming in as well because dog groomers, vets, all those places carry diseases and carry all, and the, the dogs come resilient, resilient to it. Bringing them in at a year old freaks the dog out completely. Then the, 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 the customer's not happy because their dog was very freaked out and it goes home and it lies in the corner. It won't, it won't uh, communicate with the customer and it won't play, it won't do this, it won't do that, it won't eat, it hasn't eaten in three days. That's because the dog was petrified. And that happens in dog grooming salons, it happens in vets, it happens all over the world because the customers are being advised the wrong advice. Get the dog in as a pup. When they're pups, it's like baby when they're centuries. When it's baby centuries is starting, it's all in their early years before they hit one. They have century, they hear the noise, the pups is exactly the same. And once they get used to them wee bits of noise, they remember it. People say the dogs don't, they remember everything. There's a lot of things, you know, over the years I've probably done wrong in a salon and saying, oh no, don't bring it, it's five months, it's no coat on it or whatever. No, 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 get it on, get a bath, get them in, and then the wee pup comes in. You see a lot of uh, people coming into your salon that have their dogs in every different salon. For me, be very careful of that because everybody doesn't work the same and you know, if you, you, you can keep to the one groomer, that wee dog will get used to that groomer and then you'll see a happy dog in the salon, you'll not see a dog pulling away and freaking out and doesn't want to go in there, had a bad experience. Yes, they do have a bad experience when they're a year because they know what's going on, but when they're wee pups, everything's a game. So you might as well bring them in as a game, play the game with them, get them in every two to three weeks, depending on the coat. If it's Bichon's Poodles, that's why I'm saying two to three weeks. Um, get them in, give them a wee bath. It doesn't, it doesn't cost much. It's like 10, 15 pounds for a bath and a blow dryer for a wee pup. Get them in. Short haired pups as well, if you're going to groom them, if you're going to hand strap them. Things like uh, wee schnauzers are being hand strapped. Anything at all, get them in. Get them used to the, the sensation, get them used to the noise, because sounds can be very noisy and it can freak a wee dog out and it's, it's not a nice place. Once a dog's freaked out with something, they don't ever want to go back to that environment. And that's where groomers come across a lot of difficult and handling dogs and do dogs that are very aggressive and things because they've had bad experiences. Because nine times out of 10, these dogs are house dogs and they're great in the house, but when they go to the groomers, they're going, oh my God, I didn't like that place. I'm going to play up, I'm going to go mad. As pups, they get used to it really, really quick and then, no problems. Hi everybody, if you have any questions on running a salon or dog grooming questions, please leave a comment below. Thank you for watching my video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and follow us on social media at Christie's Direct.